So we're right here at Hard Knot Pass in the Lake District. I'm joined by Holly, who's on the team. Hello. Um, so fantastic to have you uh, with us today, Holly. Um, all this week we've been riding the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and this video is gonna be about what we think about it. Well, I wanna thank you for bringing me here because I have never ever ridden anywhere as beautiful as here. Really? It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. The roads here for anyone that rides a bike is, yeah, perfect. Isn't it? Yeah. And, and actually that's one of the reasons why we why I wanted to come here because actually I think the, the, the roads that we've got here kind yeah. of actually suits the bikes that these are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and they've been tested, gravel, um, yeah. we've had all sorts of tight turns and wildlife and trucks and yeah. It's been so. pretty interesting. <laughs> So, so obviously, look, this isn't the first video that we've done on uh, Royal Enfield. Um, and actually, since the uh, idea that they were going to launch these 650s, we've been following the project quite closely, actually. Um, I suppose for a number of reasons, really. Firstly, that we really like the Royal Enfield brand. It's got that great heritage. Mm. Um, loads of people love them. Um, obviously, the bikes are made in India now, but it's got a massive British history, and I think people really like that. I think secondly, the, the existing Royal Enfields, um, you know, we can acknowledge that perhaps they've not quite fit in here in, in the UK mm -hmm. yet because mm -hmm. they probably just haven't got enough power. Yeah. And the idea that these 650s, you know, are going to take Royal Enfield into a new place, I, I think I think it's quite interesting. Yeah. And the third reason probably is that, that we knew that they were going to be priced really well. Yeah, the price is, is incredible. Yeah, to keep all the iconic features and then have that 650 engine now and the price that they're at as well, I think, I think they're going to be really, really popular bikes. So far this year, uh, the Intercept 650 is the seventh um, biggest selling bike, which is just incredible, you know, considering that two of those places are for the long standing bestseller GS1250 uh, and an Africa twin. Okay. And the rest of them are scooters. Yeah. So this bike already out the gate is beat Bonneville, it's beat Street Twin. I mean, that's really quite incredible. Yeah, they must be really thrilled with that. But it's a perfect starter bike as well. If you're, I mean, and as we're saying about the price, if you're coming off a 125 or coming off a scooter, you just pass your test. Yeah, I think it will make a perfect, perfect first bike from a 125 going from, from that, that, that leap because it doesn't feel like it's a scary leap. They're so easy to ride. Sure. And uh, although it's a 650, it's, it's, it's powerful enough, I think, but it hasn't got that kind of scary feel about it. I think they're very, very rideable. Um, and for women as well, I think they're going to be really popular. The mantra for this bike, or, the, or at least the, the marketing pitch, is easy like a sun, easy like Sunday morning, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. You agree with that? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's that's exactly how I felt on that bike today, especially in the sunshine, riding these kinds of roads. It just it puts you in this great kind of chilled zone, and yeah, they're just so easy to to manoeuvre around the corners, and yeah, you feel very relaxed and. Yeah, you don't have to wrestle with it, you know, it just does what you tell it. At the same time um, as having this bike, we've also had the Continental uh, GT650 as well, which we're going to be doing a separate piece on. So, mm -hmm. you know, check that piece out, it'll be coming very soon. So there's a few options available in the Intercept 650. This one is actually the Glitter and Dust, um, is the most expensive one in the range, of course. It's the press bike, it would be, I'm sure. Um, so this one is actually retailing at 5,999. They do start off at five and a half grand if you want some of the different um, ones. They, they've got some funky uh, names for all the different colors, which is quite interesting. Um, Mark III, for example, is, uh, is actually based on the, uh, the designer. Oh, okay. uh, Mark, who, oh, okay. who, who's been in one of our other pieces. So yeah, they've all got little quirky little names. Oh, it's quite cool. it's quite cool, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Glitter and dust, I quite like this. Yeah. It's, it looks great, doesn't it? Absolutely love it. Yeah, love it. Love, I love that tank. And, and actually the emblem, the emblem on there as well. I think something that always surprises me, and we've obviously we've rode a, f a, few, a few Royal Enfields, is the looks and how much people really like them. Like there's just a lot of respect behind them. People do really, really appreciate them. If you were to buy this bike, you know, um, you're going to experience that. You're going yeah. to, you know, and if you'd like a bike that people are going to stop you and go, hey, nice bike, mate, mm -hmm. you know, um, you're definitely going to get some of that action. I mean, in fact, so much so, when I first got it the other day, for whatever reason, pretty much the first thing I did was went to the gym on it, and I parked it outside. Anyway, I'm in the gym, I'm doing, um, 
hamstring curls, right? So I've got my face down, I've got my earphones on, I'm watching a film, and a guy was so sort of encouraged to, to tell me, I feel this tap on my shoulder, and it's this, 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 this old guy in the gym, and he says, hey, I've just got to interrupt you. That's your bike outside, isn't it? I says, yeah. And he said, it is stunning. Tell me all about it. And, wow. and it just it struck up a conversation. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think they look like that they've almost had a lot of work done to them. Yes. A lot of customization, uh, customization done to them when yeah. they're, you know, they come looking like that. So yeah. um, that's something really cool about them as well. Mm -hmm. And the fit and finish is, is, is good as well. You know, yeah. I, I think, I think, you know, it, it doesn't come across like a five and a half grand, six grand all. bike. You know, no. people have been really pleased with it. And I've talked to a few Bonnie owners and, and they've been really impressed with it as well. They're like, wow, this is like really good. Yeah, yeah. So specifically on the fit and finish, I think, you know, the paint job looks really good. Mm. I think the tank looks really good. Mm. You know, there's these little like CNC bits in different areas on the bike, I think look really good. I, I love the spoked wheels. Yeah. So yeah. it screams, you know, quality really. Yeah, it does, it does. I don't think there's anything else on the market for no. that value for money in, in motorcycles at all. Sure, and you know what? It even comes with, with its own um, toolkit. Does which it? is great, yeah. Does it? Yeah, it does, it does, it's cool. So these little side parts come, come out and you can get into the tool section. Wow. Which is cool because actually the, that type of mirrors, on, especially on a twin, you know, because there's a little bit of vibrations and stuff, they do work them the, so the way loose. And, yeah. and, and the last couple of bikes we've had, we had an R9T, um, that had that type of, uh, of mirror, and they work loose. We had, previous to that, we had a Motor Gutsy, and those mirrors work loose. And of course, you're in the middle of the Lake District, you've got no toolkit, you look for one, there isn't one, and, and you've got a wonky mirror the whole the rest of the ride, whereas this now has got its own toolkit. Okay, so obviously a massive part of these new bikes is the, uh, is the brand new engine that they're putting it, the 650 Twin. Yeah. Massive yeah. development for Royal Enfield and obviously takes uh, the brand into a different place it's not been before. Yeah. 47 horsepower, 52 newton metres of torque, parallel twin. I think it's really nice. Yeah, really nice. And, and we were saying as well how, how much you can get out of each gear as well. You know, you can really, the, the, there's a real nice long ratio between each gear uh, and it makes the bike really, really rideable mm, um, mm. And, and really easy to, to manage as well. You know, you sure. don't feel like you're continuously tapping up, tapping down. No. It's been quite forgiving with me today. I've been doing some sort of roundabouts and things in third. Sometimes you think, well, oh, mine fourth and it, and, it, and it just, it does what it's told. It does, it does. Yeah. It's, it's very, very smooth. So if you, I totally agree if you're in the wrong gear yeah um it's not like some of the some of their singles where they just kind of like you know chug 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 you know it's 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 got torque right the way through the rev range yeah. I, I i would say i think it you know encourages you to hone it around a bit you know i've used absolutely every single pony that's in that bike i think if i was nitpicking i'd say that sixth could be a bit longer i think you know when you're sort of cruising at 85-ish, you know, you're at five and a half thousand revs, which is only another thousand and a half away from red line. So it really is quite, um, okay. you, you know, you're bumping up there. And I can see why they've done that, because it, it just means that there's power available right, right, right the way through. Um, but I just think it could be that touch longer, but that's just me nitpicking. It's a really, really smooth running bike. There's no sort of lumps and bumps to it. There's not a lot of vibration, is there either? No, um, really smooth. Yeah, really, really smooth. Uh, so yeah, I, I actually think it's fantastic and I've really enjoyed riding it today. I mean, obviously you've ridden, I haven't ridden Royal Enfield before, but yeah. you, you have. So how, did, how does it compare to their, their previous? I mean, it's night and day, really. I mean, this is, uh, much, this is much more of a modern engine, right. to totally. I mean, it's a much more of a modern bike bike yeah you know it's still cla is classic motorcycle i mean you know you've got no electronic aids you've got no uh traction control anything like that so a lot of the new bikes that are coming out um even some of the triumph models have those type of things this one doesn't and i think actually people are going to like that mm. a lot of the time because it is you know it's a proper motorcycle yeah um, yeah. But you know, it, it's it's got a great engine. It's got you know, I think good torque right throughout the rev range. Actually encourages you to to, to really you know give it some. It's a lovely bike to ride. Obviously, it depends what you're used to, doesn't it? Yeah. You're used to a yeah. 883. Yeah, and you're used to something faster. Mine's a little bit faster. So yeah, yeah both coming from very different angles. Sure. But sure. it's good that you can still appreciate it as as a bike, even though you're used to something uh, quite a lot faster. To totally, and and it's a different it's a different riding style i mean you know the bike that i ride i've just 
got into this sort of like mentality and it's just like head down, wallop. Well, I've seen you doing that today on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, it, and, 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 and that, you know, if you ride that a sports bike, that becomes your world mm -hmm. is, is, you know, is head down wallop and, you know, let's go, let's, let's yeah. go for it. So yeah. it is easy and it's lovely to ride this type of road on a sunny day. Mm. It's just, it's just mm. easy. Mm. And, and, you know, following you on the other bike, I can totally, you know, buy into what this bike is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I don't think it is, that would be a perfect kind of commuter bike. I don't think it is just, for, I mean, I would feel comfortable doing some, some distance on that as well. I don't know about sure. you, but I would feel happy oh, totally. um, that that would, that would serve really well in, in like a long trip or a few days away or something like that. It isn't, it, it would be an ideal commuter, but I think it, it would stand up to that as well. Mm. Um, depending on what people are looking for from a bike. While we're finishing off about the engine, I have to say I really like the exhaust. Yeah. About it, I think I think you know this is probably one of the only bikes that I would, uh, at the moment, in terms of new bikes, would say, I, I wouldn't replace the exhaust. No, no, no. There's no need to. It makes a nice sound and, and yeah. it serves the bike really well as it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, that being said, I bet we'll see some great customs of these. Oh yeah, yeah. To, to, well, the, the, there's already been some. I mean, they're, 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 yeah, and they look, they're, they just look fantastic. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But but I, I I really like them, and especially from behind, they look really really good. So obviously, uh, a big part of us doing these tests is not only from the enjoyment of riding these bikes, but also testing the Knox gear at the same time. Um, it's just been fantastic. I mean, today it's been beautiful. What was it, 16, 17 degrees? Something today? like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so you've been in your t-shirt and your Urban Pro and yeah. I've had this on underneath mine, um, my Cold Killers, and then I've had it over the top. Um, yeah, really, really lovely. It's worked well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really, really well. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. look, we're not going to babble on about all of the gear, but all of the links are in the description if you want to check out what we have been wearing. Handling, how have you found the handling? Yeah, the handling I've actually found really good, especially on some of these quite challenging roads. Mm. Uh, you are able to kind of sort of use your body a bit more, which I suppose is something quite new to me because I don't tend to use my body on my on my bike. Um, I'm quite a big fan of, sort of like counter steering and sure. and engine braking, and um, with that, yeah, you can really like you know really do some some body work and steering it around the corners and things sure, and sure. once you kind of ease into that mm. um yeah i think you can get a, a lot of sort of enjoyment out of riding it like that and obviously watching you ride as well well i think i think uh, you know i definitely think that the handling and, and 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 the chassis and the suspension they've got sorted and you know they've obviously work with uh, Harris Performance to, to do all that stuff, right. you know, which are a really, really famous company for, for suspension and, and, and chassis work. I'd probably argue with anybody that said it didn't handle well and, yeah. and said that the suspension wasn't sorted. For the type of bike it is, I think it's pretty planted. You know, mm. it encourages you to get, you know, get hustle on um, mm. around corners. I found myself going around roundabouts quite a few times and, you know, just enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've been getting quite an angle on it, actually, haven't you? Well, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and, and I would say pretty good tyres as well. The tyres are the Pirelli Phantom Sport Comp. I've got no issues with them so no. far. As I say, I've ridden the bike pretty hard. Yeah. Um, only in the dry, though. It hasn't rained this week, so okay. I've only been able to do it in the dry. Harris Performance, again, have handled the, the suspension. So up the front, you've got... Um, a non-adjustable uh, fork but to be honest I think it doesn't necessarily need to be I think it fits the bike pretty well yeah and, and then on the rear you've got twin uh, gas shocks now that is uh, adjustable so okay. if you're heavier or you are take you know you are doing that tour and you're taking a load of luggage you can you know crank that thing um, yeah. either way yeah the, sus uh, the suspension's really good isn't really it? good really smooth yeah yeah really really nice and actually, there, is a tool, breaking... there is a tool in, in the kit to actually change it as well, which is quite cool. Right, okay. They've managed the suspension not only to be soft, but I think, you know, pretty planted mid-corner, you know. Um, I think it, you know, it, it works well. It doesn't buck around too much. No, you know, no. It's, it's good. And brakes obviously handled by a single disc, 320 mil on the front. Um, okay. And rear is a 210. But, you know, rear brake is just, you know, they don't yeah. really do much anyway, but it's a nice it's a nice tight brake, but it's also it's not one of those ones that where you feel like you're gonna fly over the front of the handlebars. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a good brake, but it's not yeah, I mean some some of the bikes I've ridden are almost you have to be very, very careful with them. A bit um, too sharp. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, again with my bike it's you sort of got everything cross whether it's actually gonna stop or not. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but that is it's just enough without being too much. Yeah. 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 Well 
me on the other hand, I, I, th- I think it's got a little bit of initial bite. I think, it, okay. if I'm being honest, I, I'd prefer to see a bit m- more power in, in, in the, the break. break. Yeah. Personally, you know, and we'll come on to the weight, but this is a heavy bike. Yeah. You know, 230 kilos. You know, and if you, the bike's capable of over 100 miles an hour. So you've got a um, 230 kilo bike can go over 100 mile an hour. I, I think this kind of bike at that weight and that, that, that sort needs of speed a bit more. It needs twin discs, okay. you know, and that's what I'd be looking for. Yeah. You know. Again, but that's our different experiences. Me, me riding with, with next to nothing brake and you've probably got quite a sharp brake. So, sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah, for me it's an improvement. Yeah, I mean, I think if you, you, you know, if you pootling around and doing the kind of stuff we're doing it's 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 fine you know yeah. and the bike has been developed sort of with with that in mind but yeah i think you know i'd i'd love to see another another uh, disc on it okay. so you warned me didn't you that on the phone that you know this is a heavy bike yeah. um before i got on to, on it um and it, it it's not i mean it, it is a heavy bike i mean compared to to others perhaps of the other 650s but it's i think it's more the 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 distribution of the weight isn't it it's quite top heavy um i mean i haven't found it difficult i haven't found it difficult and i haven't found that makes a difficult sort of it i haven't found that makes um it, it overly difficult I, but i can see maybe from a female's point of view or maybe somebody that's newer to bikes um how that might be you know it might just take a little of, of, of time to get used to that mm. um i think once you are used to it then yeah once you're up and ri- riding it's absolutely fine but mm. you know parking up reversing um, it's just making sure you've got the right balance point all the time sure. um, of it as well. It sort of feels like we're picking on Royal Enfield for this, but actually, you know, it probably the same thing applies to quite a lot of different bikes. It probably applies to Triumph quite a lot as well. Yeah. So yeah. When, I, when I test rode the Frux and I found that it was a lump of steel as yeah. well. Yeah, and Harleys as well. They're and all, Harleys, all heavy. I mean, your bike's made out of pig iron. Yeah, you know, yeah. As well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's personal preference as well, I think. It is. Some people like a sturdy, solid-feeling bike, yeah. you know, and they feel a bit more secure, and other people yeah. like things that are lighter. And so. with that comes stability. It does, know? it does. Yeah. It doesn't move in the wind. We've had some wind today, no. and I felt very, very sort of stable on it. So. Sure. Okay, look, so that is the Royal Enfield Incept 650. I think we're both fans, actually. Yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs yeah. up, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I'd really encourage you to get down to your um, local Royal Enfield dealer and go yeah. and check it out. Yeah. You know, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'm, I'm sure it's not for everybody, yeah. but, you know, it's really fit what we've uh, been doing. I think it's fun. And, yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed the experience. Yeah, no, me too. And I think especially if you've got nice roads to ride it on as well, it, it really helps as well. Fantastic. So, look, um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, Please like, please comment and please subscribe to the channel too and we'll see you next time.